Gadget UK here again, we're looking at the other FIG20 um, again here, this is the original version, not the cost reduced version. You'll have seen this in my first FIG20 video, um, I just showed you briefly. The case has been cleaned up a fair bit, but you can see it's in pretty good condition actually. You can still see the marks, and it is, I'm sure it's a soldering iron, I'm sure it's not. Um, if you look at the back, if you look at the front here, I'm sure this is not cable burn. If you look at that there, it's like it's melted. Um, it's melted at a sort of an unusual angle. Um, and there's a few of those on the sides as well. There's one down there, can you see that? It's, you know, it's deep, it's quite a deep mark. I'm pretty sure that's not cable. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, other than that one on the front there, it's actually not too bad, actually. Needs a couple of keys. Uh, I've got a couple of keys on the way, actually. Um, I'm having trouble sourcing an O key, and I'm not sure about the plungers. Um, I don't know if the seller's sending me the plungers, I don't think he is. So that could be a problem as well. Um, but anyway, at some point, this one will be completely up and running. But right now, what I'm going to do is uh, stick a new VIC chip uh, in this. If you watch my previous video there, you'll see that I got some of those VIC chips. Um, so I'm going to stick one in there um, and give it a test. Uh, the other thing we're going to need to deal with is the power because it's got the 2 pin 9 volt AC connector here so what I'm thinking of doing is just connect um, a DC 12 volt connector to the connections on the inside and perhaps route it out the back or something um, so I'll whip the lid off and I'll get that chip in there So this is the before shot, if you look on the left hand side there you can see the lines quite noticeably, look how much those stand out, they're really visible, um, and along the bottom hopefully you can see that as well, it might get blurred out in the compression of this video but hopefully you can see that, um, and you should be able to see the difference in a minute once I've removed that ferrite bead and replaced it with 270 pico farad cap. So you can see I've got the new Vic chip in there now, um, heat sunk, um, just to make it last a bit longer. Um, you can see I've done a similar mod that I did to the cost reduced version where I removed the ferrite bead that goes to pin 2, the, the you know the compass are coming out, colour, I think it's the colour pin actually. Um, remove the ferrite bead there in that position and swap it out with two caps. Uh, if you've got a 270 pico farad cap you can just use a single cap but I've only got, I think I've put a 220 and a 47 just like I did in the cost reduced version. And there's a space next to this that's unpopulated where well, you can see a ferrite bead at the moment, that's where my nail is. Um, so uh, I tried doing exactly the same thing I did on the cost reduced version, just putting a ferret, the, the, the ferrite beater removed from the output of the two caps there to ground and I was getting ghosted so that was the opposite of what was happening with the cost reduced version. So I stuck the um, 15 micro Henry inductor in there in that position instead um, and then the ghosting was a bit better but it was still there so I put another, another uh, 15 micro Henry inductor in parallel with it on the underside of the board um, and it's pretty perfect now. It's, it's not quite as clean as the cost reduced version but it's, it's very 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 close maybe you know it's 99% um, as good as the cost reduced um, mod I did so I think we'll leave it like that. Um, you can see also if I just move down a little bit into shot I've got a cap here on pin four between pin 40 and ground uh, just to smooth the input to the big chip there um, just as I did on the cost reduced version. And the other thing I've done here as I described is just to connect um, a power connector here, it's like an inline, I've not got the right type of connector really but it's you know it's heat, heat shrunk there, I don't you can see that so it's, you know it's totally isolated just coming out the back there now with a full width car like this it can be a bit of a challenge getting it in there, it does fit as you can see there you go, it does fit but it's a bit tight, it's not ideal but I don't want to modify the case um, I could swap this connector out for like, a, I did think about swapping this out for a, a, a DIN, you know, Commodore 64 type um, socket there and, you know, modify the thing so that it works off a standard C64 uh, power supply like that. But actually, I think I'd rather leave this stock so it can be reverted and just, you know, you could easily just desolder those two connections there, just use the original power supply with it. Um, my power supply I'm using for this is feeding 12 volts DC into this. You don't need to worry about the polarity, obviously, because there's a bridge rectifier on here, and it's just going to flip, flip the, you know, invert the uh, supply there. If you've got it around, you know, not the ideal way, it doesn't really matter. Um, there is no right or wrong way to connect it up to the bridge, effectively. Um, now, I've tested this for a prolonged period of time, and it's it's working well actually. Um, it's perhaps getting a little bit hotter 
than I would have anticipated. Perhaps because of the, the voltage drop there, you know, it's, this is having to dissipate, you know, a fair bit of the, the voltage there into heat um, with that 12 volt supply. It's perhaps better suited to something like a 10, 10 volt um, or 11 volts supply. I might, I guess, I could, in, you know, put a, a diode if I get a beefy enough diode that's going to. I need to measure the current first. Get a diode and put it in series and drop the voltage by, you know, what, uh, 0.7 volts or something like that. That might help a little bit, but I'm just not sure how hot the diode's going to be and whether that needs to get heat sunk. Um, but anyway, it is working. Um, I'll show you. So just for the moment, I swapped over the keyboard because obviously those missing keys will um, cause a problem. But as you can see, um, got the power connected there for switch it on. Um, got power light for point of the screen. See there, that's working fine. So you can see what I mean. It's I would say it's not quite as sharp as the other one, but if you look at the um, you know the size of the screen there, yeah, there's a little bit of banding just down here a little bit, but actually significantly improved. Um, and using these new Vic chips, you can see the colour seems quite good. I don't know, it just seems a little bit stronger um, than the old Vic chip. That I was originally in this particular model. So those replacement Vic chips uh, seem to be pretty good. And I've done quite a bit of extensive testing on those uh, new Vic chips. Actually, I've had sort of I've been testing them over the last three days, doing various burning tests and things, um, and they do seem to be working really well. You can see a little bit of the ghosting just down on the just here, not ghosting, but the, the the jail bar lines just here a little bit. But overall, actually, when I've compared, you know, I've reversed the mods and. I've compared before and after and it's significantly better. So we'll just load this game now. I uh, apologise for the, the wind today. I wouldn't be surprised if it starts chucking it down soon. So I'll try and get this video wrapped up as soon as I can really. It's only going to be a short video. We'll just test this. Um, and then just something else I want to show you before I go as well, which I was surprised at, that I discovered yesterday. This is quite a good bit of homebrew. There's quite a lot of homebrew on the VIC-20 actually. It's amazing. Um, in recent years there's been a fair few games thrown at it. Um, in fact there's another one I'll show you in a minute. I'll show you Popeye after this. Let's turn that down a touch. Quite cool music there for the Vic. Reminiscent of the Spectrum room. I like the way the uh, title screen bobs up and down with the music. Anyway, hit fire. Let's just make sure this is working. You're supposed to collect those things, I think, the little blocks. There's one up here somewhere, I got that one. Oh shit. Yeah, that's not what you're supposed to do. I think on this first level you're supposed to collect three blocks. There's one there, let's get that one. Got that one. Collect that one. Do a U-turn. Extreme left. Collect that one. And then I think the exit opens. Oh, hang on, better off going back out from the top side actually. It's because you've got more space. There we go, level one done. Anyway, you can see that's working. Um, and as I say, I have tested this for quite a few hours. It was on about five hours yesterday. Um, I did do some temperature checks on that regular. It was getting pretty warm, but not with it, not out of spec, you know, nowhere near going uh, out of its uh, maximum temperature handling. Um, value so it should be alright I think. It, just, it won't be used for prolonged periods of time this particular Vic anyway. This is going to be my backup Vic. I'll just keep this as a spare. Anyway I'll just show you Popeye. I guess the other thing worth pointing out here as well, I'm using the RAM expansion at the moment with this and there's no issues at all with that power cable. There's a good gap um, in the side of it. You might, be, you might have more trouble if you do that sort of mod um, if you've got um, an original car, you know, something like that, you know, that because it, it that is quite wide. This it would be very tight with one of these types of carts in there. Yeah, so basic sound and graphics, but it's not too bad actually. It's a pretty good port to the Vic. Let's just hit fire. It's another one of these games by AF. Uh, I'm not sure who AF is, but. He did the Puyan port as well. I think he might have done one or two others. Uh, I think this was done, uh, did that say this year? 2015, I can't remember. It might be 2014, I missed it on the title screen. Um, 
I think this is a port of the arcade game, isn't it? You've got to collect the hearts there from all over the top. You can punch this thing here, this punch bag, and that thing will fall down onto Bluto. He's going to wake up before I get that, I think, isn't he? It's quite hard, I have to admit. But it's pretty good. Yeah, and you can do that from the platforms below. Anyway, I'll just show you the other thing I want to show you quickly before I wrap this up. And that's, you can play SID music um, on the VIC-20, uh, which is unbelievable, really. Someone's written a routine that um, looks at the original SID file, I think, and interprets it in such a way that the VIC can play uh, a similar version. It's not, not exactly the same. I don't know whether it's converting it to like a... PCM type format or something. I don't know. I don't ex know exactly how it's working, but it does work quite well. So I'll just load up Cybernoid and you can just have a quick listen to that. Yeah, when I say PCM, I, I kind of mean just a sample. I mean a generic sample. I'm just wondering if it's been converted to some sort of sample and there's a sample playback perhaps going on. as good as an actual sin, but still I think it's remarkable really that you can uh, listen to some of these old sin tunes on a VIC-20 this way. It's also possible to fit an actual SID. Um, I have read on the one of the, I think it was on the Sleeping Elephant uh, forum there, someone actually managed to map a SID into some you know address space there within the VIC and then using some basic program to play a SID tune, they managed to play a SID tune. So you could actually, you know I might have a go at doing that at some point in the future with this. Um, perhaps try and get an actual SID in here. That would be used. That would be fun to do, I guess. Um, but anyway, I thought you'd find those few little bits there interesting. We didn't really cover anything particularly exciting in this video, but I just thought I'd just show you how I've been getting on with this really, and how I've got this um, almost up and running. At some point when I've got those other keys, I might just do another follow-on video so you can see it all um, in its end state. Really, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.